Hey, what's up guys? It's Brian here, Brian's Law Maintenance. All right guys, today we have an exciting video for you guys. We're hanging out with Mark Parker. What's up, bro? What's up, fellas? How's it going? We're doing good, we're doing good. So we're gonna be talking chainsaws today. Mm -hmm. Mark Parker, we're talking about battery chainsaws. Mm -hmm. All right, and whether they're not for contractors, whether they're not for homeowners, we got a lot of stuff part of this. Uh, we're gonna do a three part video series, guys. So make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell. So Mark, uh, let's talk real quick your background. Just give these guys some stats about you so they know where you're coming from with credibility. So I'm technically Technical field specialist with Bryan Equipment Sales. We're the distributor of steel product across five and a half states: okay. Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, West Virginia, and Western Tennessee. Okay. I go around and I do uh, chainsaw safety training. I do technical trainings with dealerships and end users, and I work and teach people how to use our products in a safe manner. All right. So you're going to be teaching us a lot of uh, equipment today with battery chainsaws. Mm -hmm. We got the little uh, what do you call this? Like a sawhorse? That's going to yeah, be yeah. We'll call it a sawhorse. Okay. That's going to be doing some demo. Mm -hmm. And like I said, we're going to also do a part two video, which is breaking down a chainsaw maintenance, like how to fix the bar, fix the chains, um, what all the different parts of a chainsaw are. Mm -hmm. Really exciting. And then number three, a little caveat here, uh, Mark brought his little steel, what is this? The G it's a GTA 26 garden pruner. Garden pruner. We got the new uh, Milwaukee hatchet uh, saw, and then Craftsman sent this one also to us. It's like a it's like the Jaws of Life is what yeah, you call yeah. it. <laughs> I, I, he showed it to me and I was like, this looks like the Jaws of Life. <laughs> So we're gonna we're gonna have fun with this three part video series. Um, so let's take it away. Battery mm -hmm. chainsaws, man. They've they've uh, made a splash the last what four or five years on the market. Absolutely. Okay. So what do we got on the table here? So okay. So I brought a couple different chainsaws. Uh, the MS two hundred and fifty. This is a tried and true chainsaw, um, bread and butter chainsaw that's been around for years. Okay. Um, a lot of people own it. Probably one of our most popular chainsaws. And then I basically brought our newest battery chainsaw which is the equivalent to this this is the msa 220 okay um it can handle a 16 inch bar um and when you see they look it they can hold the same bar they're able to uh, same power difference is you have your quick chain adjuster and your toolless uh bro hold on, hold on there. look there is a cat going down the road skid steer like paul jameson was laughing when you guys we were doing our podcast right and uh little there's always a skid steer i'm in a i'm in an apartment complex why is there skid steers going around every time i'm here I, that's the way it is i just don't get it bro there's a flight there's planes there's skid steers mm -hmm. oh my gosh that's why i bought property mark yes so <laughs> So with this, there's things you have to uh, think about because you also have to incorporate a battery yep. um, that goes with it. And then also I brought our top handles um, equivalents. So we have our uh, MS-201 TCM, um, tried and true, uh, awesome top handle chainsaw. But then we have the MSA-161T. Okay. Um, so didn't I see this debuted at GIE last year? Uh, yes. Okay. You did. That looks familiar. Yours is dirtier than my stuff, though. Yes, mine is. A, yeah, I just got these back from demos for some tree guys. Okay. And you tree guys like to use this stuff. Yeah. So, always always power, power wash your stuff before you give it back to somebody. Yeah. You? So. Um, All right. So so gas versus battery. Let's mm -hmm. let's start really quick with that one because that's a big question. Mm -hmm. What about for the homeowners and then what about for the pros? What have you seen out there? So what I'm seeing is for. Let's talk professional users across the board. Okay. There are purposes for battery uh, chainsaws. These top handle saws, that, I would recommend that for a guy up in a tree. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you're working around power lines, things like that. Or uh, maybe you just do, you wanna switch away from having to start a saw while you're up in a tree. Makes sense. Um, if you don't cut wood very often, you just cut up firewood. You do a little bit of storm damage when you're doing property maintenance um, for properties you guys maintain, battery saws would be an excellent option because then you're not having to deal with fuel filters, bad fuel, carburetor, stuff like that. Okay. You just have it sitting in your truck or your trailer as an on-demand option. Gotcha. For homeowners, um, it really depends on how much firewood you cut. If you're going to be in northern Michigan um, and you cut a lot of firewood because you heat your home with firewood, sure. you're going to need a bigger saw, a 362, a 462. These are professional chainsaws, a 391, a 271. You'll need a bigger chainsaw. If you are a guy who you just kind of clean up some sticks around your yard, you got some branches, maybe you cut a little bit of wood here and there, a battery saw could be a great option for you. I've cut down and processed entire trees with battery saws. Yep. Um, so they're able to handle that. Okay. So 
it's kind of do you want to buy this the fuel up front um because this is basically me paying for the fuel and the maintenance up front right. all together so this is your fuel filter your air filter your carburetor your gasoline your oil mix this is everything all in one right here you got to look at it that way that's a great when way to look at it when you're I holding never... a, when you're holding a battery and a charger this is versus, awesome versus with this or with this it's less expensive but you have a lot of other soft costs that don't show up right at the time of, or the point of purchase that sure. maintenance costs and things like that. There is really no maintenance costs with these saws. There's no air filters to change. There's no fuel filters. There's no fuel lines. There's no fuel to put in. Absolutely. It. So you just change, you just charge this. Yep. Um, running the numbers for every $70 in fuel that you spend for one of these pieces of equipment, you'll spend about $7 charging a battery. Oh, wow. That's about how, that's and, 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 and in the, the cost of the battery. Okay. That's about how, how it equates. Well, again, you know, we're gonna do uh, some more uh, walkthroughs and demos here with you guys. We're gonna uh, throw the chaps on, start getting to the sawing action. Um, love to hear your guys' thoughts. Are you guys uh, battery fans? Are you guys gas fans? Are you more old school, like the lumberjack? I, I know some of you guys that are tree guys, you're out there hacking things things down and um, you guys you know it's gas chainsaws or die mm -hmm. we get that uh, are you a homeowner or a contractor that's just hey a tree fell and you want to go clean that thing up for 400 bucks really quick um, and maybe you have a battery chainsaw we do that a lot I have the MSA what do I have the 200 the, the 200 I have the 200 I love that thing it is my go-to most favorite chainsaw that I own and I don't have any gas powered chainsaws because like Mark said we don't chainsaw trees down very often mm -hmm. right so all right well you want to uh, throw the chaps on we'll do some demos here and we'll show you guys how this all works works absolutely all right so where are we at now all right so we've got the ms 250 yep and then we're gonna run the msa 220 okay and then we have the ms 201 tc we're gonna show how that goes up against the 161 and then we're gonna cut with the 462 all right by the way that 460 four, six, that thing sounded crazy bro yeah it sounds it sounds completely different than everything else I love um it. with but these when you're pulling them over and we're starting have three points of contact Pull the saw over, yep. you hear it burp once, take it off high choke, make sure your brake is on, and then just pull it over. All right. One thing to show, when you're putting the brake on the saw, roll your wrist forward, when you're taking the brake off the saw, take your hand off the trigger. So okay. that's important to remember, roll your wrist forward for put the brake on and then pull it off. So I'm going to show you guys a down cut and an up cut. All right. All right. Nice. So we got uh, little thin cuts, uh, little little wafers here. These are going to be, uh, I'm sure my wife will want these for some DIY project, you know? Yeah, so, Liz will turn those into coasters or something. Something like that. Or we'll give him the mulch mate, he can laser engrave them, you know? Mm -hmm. All right, so we got this little bungee cord just to keep some tension on this so it doesn't move. So with, uh, with when it comes to making these pruning cuts, I've always heard people say like, go halfway uh, from underneath and halfway on the top, right? Absolutely. What, so, what's your technique? What do you guys suggest? So say we have a big branch or something like that and this is hanging off. Yep. What I would normally do, depending on where the branch is, yep. notice the difference between the battery and the not battery. I didn't have to yell or anything. I can have my headphone, I can have my earmuffs up and yeah. everything. My little so, pea shooter, you know? With that, it's a, good idea, it's a good idea to do a release cut. Okay. And then you can come in from the bottom up. So you're almost doing a two part Just like that. So you cut it down to relieve, to help relieve the tension and then you're able to cut it up. Okay. There's no weight on it, so I had to cut all the way through mm -hmm. or and stuff like that. But that's a good, so if you cut behind, in front and then you cut behind it and you're able to cut all the way through so it has a nice clean cut. All right, looking good, bro. So that's uh, the 200, that's the one that, that's mine. The, no, this was oh, the that's two, 220. Oh, the 220. Oh, where's my little pea shooter? Oh, right there, I got the 200. Yeah, there's yours. Okay. So, um, if we want to show a size comparison between the two of them. Yeah. What is this, like a 14, 12? Yes. 
14 inch and then this is 16 all right cool deal looking sharp this is mine i love this i, I clean up tons of stuff with that little mm -hmm. guy so all right and then what do we got uh gas now yep so now we have the 201 okay by the way you guys can see that mark's got full chaps on gloves his helmet his ears eyes mm -hmm. safety first guys notice how i have to put the earmuffs back on is that the top saw yes okay And then with the same battery, I'm able to pop that right over here into the top handled saw. Okay, that's so, the, the gas top handle and then the battery mm -hmm. top handle. Yep, just showing you guys kind of the difference between the profile of each of them right here. Yeah, for sure. And we're able to come off. Mark, I got a question for you. I've always heard, let the chain and the saw, by the weight, take it down. Absolutely. Not push into it. Absolutely. Can you speak on that for a quick second? Does that mean your chain might be getting dull if you're wedging it in? If you're having to slam the chain into the wood, um, that's it's harder on you as the operator. It doesn't really make much sense. Yep. Let the saw in itself do the work. Okay. If I just set it on here. Saw do all of the work for me. Yep. Completely effortless. I like it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, man. tell the difference in power between that and the other sauce. I, I hope it's translating to camera because this thing is a beast, bro. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't even in the same galaxy. No. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of how you can tell the difference between a homeowner saw and a professional use saw. If my neighbors are home right now, I'm sure half of these people are working from home. I'm sure I'm that guy right now. So anyway, thumbs up, man, whatever. <laughs> Thanks everybody. <laughs> All right, well, let's jump uh, back to the table here. We're gonna break some things down and uh, just do some wrap up thoughts and uh, we'll catch up with you guys here in a quick second as we uh, do a little transition here. So what do we got here? Uh, all the equipment, you were saying there's some takeaways that uh, you were dropping on Pulse Podcast. Absolutely, so we gotta think when you're running a chainsaw, you wanna go from head to toe with your safety apparel. Um, right. You wanna make sure whenever you have that you have a good helmet um, that works. You want to make sure you test the suspension of the helmet, give it a couple of punches, squeeze it, make sure the uh, the helmet is in good working condition. The, the one thing that I remember at our live event last year, you said look for cracks mm -hmm. and then also don't put any um, stickers. Correct. So what's up with the sticker thing? Why? So what happens with the stickers is the glue in the stickers actually softens the polymers on the helmet. Okay. And so um, that actually reduces the structural integrity of the helmet. Is that right? Yes. So don't put like your favorite logo or YouTube or a company uh, necessarily on your helmet necessarily you can correct. get a tattoo yeah but that's all that's different correct all right <laughs> it is not recommended um, so we have that you want to make sure you have safety glasses on um, I've got a pair right in here uh, in this fancy bag 
So you want to make sure you have safety glasses on of some kind yep. um, and make sure there's a little rating right inside you'll see um, Z87, right? Z87. You want to make sure there's Z87 sunglasses. Um, Another thing you said, boots. Yep. Uh, I, I know I'm wearing my Cujo shoes. I'm wearing my Cujo boots today. Uh, not a plug for them, but you know, yep. literally, like you said, you want to have good boots. Yeah, what, got what is happening, bro? Again, <laughs> what, what, what aircraft? Are they getting ready for Labor Day? I swear, there's two. How are there two? <laughs> and what are they doing? Why are they that close? And people think I make this stuff up, bro. When yeah. I say every YouTube video I do, there's a jet, a train, a boat. I, I don't know. I don't a get skid it. Steer, a skid there's steer. A skid steer. A steamroller. I, um, I, I, that's how I do YouTube, guys. So thumbs up for all the loud noises. Loud noises. Loud noises. <laughs> all right. So, so helmet. Uh, you safety safety glasses. glasses. Uh, with the helmet, you want to make sure you have your ear protection as well. Okay. Um, so then you have your ears covered and protected. Uh, you want to have good gloves. Yep. Um, these gloves, actually, you can tell they're warm, but they actually have the chaps material in the top of the gloves here gotcha. for a little added protection. Um, um, you want to make sure you have your full chaps. Um, these are a little dirty because we just got done cutting. Yep. But you want to make sure that you wash them periodically and wash them out of the box. Why and is then, that? And then because you want to wash them out of the box because when stuff is when chaps are packaged, they're condensed down into a box. So okay. Get them out, fluff them up so the inside material unravels properly uh, around the saw. Makes sense, bro. So then also you want to wash them periodically throughout use because oil and gas and dirt can help deteriorate the, uh, the chaps material and the fibers inside. So you want to make sure that those are all in good working condition as well. And by the way, if they're not on, they don't help you. Correct. Right? So yes. wear them. Wear them. <clears throat> Even if you think you look like a dork, wear them. Okay? Because what did you say on Paul's podcast? Like how much are your arms and legs yeah. worth to you? So these are about ninety dollars so i value each one of my legs more than forty five dollars right if right. you break it down that way we sell a whole kit it comes with a bag similar to this a helmet chaps gloves and safety glasses it's around a hundred dollars holy crap for the whole kit yeah a hundred to 150 dollars depending on when you're looking at this video and if it's on the promotion or not okay um no i like it dude so, so for 150 bucks, you have all your safety equipment that you need, and it's all in a bag for yep. you that you can just keep right in the garage. Uh, and by the way, even if you're just, hey, a little tree branch fell, man, like be smart, be safe, mm -hmm. right? So don't be, don't be cutting grass, don't be cutting up trees in your Dockers and your Nike uh, or Dad New Balance shoes. <laughs> don't be doing any of that in the front yard. Don't say it's just one branch or yep. just, because th when you start justifying lapses of judgment, that is when mistakes happen, and all that's right. when injuries can occur. Curve. All right, man. Uh, any final thoughts you want to leave these guys with chainsaws, um, battery chainsaws? Again, guys, leave us some comments down below. Mm -hmm. Do you like gas or do you like battery? Uh, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. I, I think you got to figure out what makes sense for you and your business. Absolutely. Um, where can these guys find you if they want to keep up with you? They can find me, Mark Parker 567 on Instagram. You can Google Mark Parker Steel um, if you want to contact me through the channels of Steel to come do a safety training or a demo for you. There we go. And Buddy says, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Yep. All right. All right, guys. Well, that's it with this episode and this video. Uh, stay tuned to the other three-part video series here. We got all the dogs, a little turf battle going mm -hmm. on, bro. Again, skid steers, jets, air airplanes, uh, dogs bark. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we call that a, a Friday over here at the Fullerton household, bro. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for watching, Mark. For real, thanks again. Thanks, buddy. Cool, guys. We'll see you on the next one.